Praise the Lord, everybody. Appreciate the Lord. Bless us to be in the house of the Lord one more time. Thank God for keeping us through the last night, through the storm. And all those heavens didn't get much rain. They got a lot of fun up there, brother. But I kind of laid down in confidence. You know, and uh, normally I'd be a little bit kind of worried. But last night I was comfortable in it. I thank God for watching over us. You know, we need God to always watch over us and, and to keep us in his eye. And I got, got to keep us, you know, I would listen to the life of walking through the house doing something. I heard mention about this uh, coronavirus. And I believe it says not in December, sometime it could be 300,000 people have their virus, uh, that death, not that virus. 300,000 people, you know. Jesus got to watch over us. The Bible said, if he don't keep the city, the watchman will wake but in vain. We need Jesus in this hour to sustain us. You know? We don't know, thank God, just for the a, a time that we in. Got to have much of God to help us. We're going to go in prayer. We appreciate everybody. We're going to speak to you for a few minutes. We're going to go in prayer for you and ask God to be a blessed to serve us. And for you to speak to our hearts and lead us by the Spirit. Thank God, Father, we thank you today, and I appreciate you, Lord, for God for waking us and doing what you've done for us to sustain us and keep us. Thanks for making provision for your people, and keeping their mind, be a fence, Lord, about them, Lord, to keep their mind in the right place. Thank you, God, for all the means to tend the mercy that you. Well, we spoke yesterday, Lord, your compassion to fail not. Yes. Right now, Lord, we need your compassion for the whole world, especially your people. We need your compassion. Yes. We need your mercy, God. They're talking about all this stuff, the, the death going to be, they're going to be taken, God. I, Lord, without your help, Lord, without your protection, without your mercy, God, there's no other way out. Lord, but your mercy and your grace that preaches a lot, Lord. And, some may get tired of it, Lord, that's all right. I know right now, God, I'm, I'm depending upon your mercy. I'm depending upon your grace. Lord, I'm depending upon your help, God, to keep us. This stuff is out here, Lord. And except you watch over us, Lord. Except you preserve us. Except you keep us, Lord. There's no keeping for us. And I thank you, Lord. And I bow before you. I bow all the people. I bow their possession. I bow for their life, their health. Them that have a job, that bow before you, Lord. I bow everything before you at your feet, God. I bow in your name, Lord, that you shield and protect, move in the hospital. Yes, Look upon Willie. Bring him out that hospital, Lord, his wife, honey. Yes, oh, Lamb of God, I pray. All of those, Lord, that, that young man, God, that the doctor won't take his eye out. We pray. Lord, since we heard it, we've been praying, ask you to give him a miracle. God, that you not let him take his eye out, God. Oh, Father, I know you, God. You're the, the prayer and Savior. You're the healer. You're the deliverer. And I'm asking God for his deliverance. In the name of Jesus, Lord. Sister, Sister Irene's son and daughter-in-law, God. They, Sister Sykes' nephew and brother. Keep them, Lord, I pray. Move for them. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, Father. They're being the sick among us today. I'm asking you to, God, to heal. Lord, deliver the bound. Move for our nation, our country. It's in a mess. Move for it, God, I pray. In the name of Jesus, and we'll thank you. Praise God. Give him a hand, pray. We appreciate the Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank God for those of you who appreciate we have today. I know sometimes it's a stress, especially right now. We thank God God gave us a mind call. Because it's a pressing way sometimes, even to try, to try to press your way out because of this time that we're in right now. And we need something to help us, to motivate us, something to push us, something to encourage us, you know. And sometimes our body don't feel like something, my mind don't be in that place. But the Bible says be instant in season and out of season, isn't it? So when we don't feel like it, we got to be, Sister Jonah got to be instant. Amen. You know, 
Now, mind ain't that. You know, sometimes your mind just don't beat up. You know what's so psychic? You got to press in the way. You got to go and do it in the way. You know? Sometimes I know a lot of times run that I buy me and I feel like it, but sometimes our mind just don't be there. Amen. You know. So we got the pressure we can't go by what we feel, how we feel it. Right. We got the pressure and we right. strive. The Bible says strive. Yes. And do what I'm saying, because you know we always have that strive. We always they always have that opportunity to strive and press. It's, it's the end to this thing. Yes, Jesus is. coming back one day. Yes. And Sister John, he's a them that been faithful. You've been faithful with a few things. So right now, why we got a mind, why we got the, a, 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 a body to it, a health, we need to press and strive and ask God to motivate us to keep going on. We pray for those that are in the home that I know never hit people. And I pray that they don't get comfortable, thank God, because they, some people got comfortable probably not going to church. And uh, I pray they don't get comfortable. And, and you know, it's all right. To, it's all right for them now when they stand at home. I pray that the Spirit don't get a hold of people. Thank God. We're going to speak to you for a few minutes. We appreciate everybody. appreciate those you come out, those that be tuning in. I pray that you get your Bible, those at home, get your Bible and go along with us. We pray this word of God will be a strength to you, be help. You know, this is what it's all about. It's being a help and being a strength to people to encourage people. Because, you know, we need that, folks. We need to be surprised with the people that's joining us that are fighting right now. They're trying their best to hold on. And the devil has got the best of them, but we need something. Yes. Today, thank God, Brother Flan, to keep us holding on, to keep us. The Bible, he that endured it to the end, the yes. same shall be if we will endure it. You know, but God, how we feel. We may not feel like it, we may not feel like God even with us, but you know, we got to endure it, got to keep striving, got to keep pressing. That's God put that in me, put that stride, run around, put that press in me, regardless of what I feel like. But I feel like I'm doing something, or if I feel like I'm doing, I ain't doing nothing, that's God keep me going in the way. Keep me steadfast, keep me unmoving. This is from the book of 2 Timothy. We're going to read 2 Timothy 2, verse 1 through 5. And I, tell you, I really appreciate the Lord for coming down in 1975 and doing what he did yes. for me. Yes. Walking in my room and telling me I was free. Yes. And I didn't have to do it no more. Second Timothy, chapter two and verses one through five. Father, sanctify this word. I pray, Lord, give me utterance to speak it, Lord. I, let it be a strength, God. I, Lord, we're not trying to be professional. We're just, Lord, trying to give something that'll help people. That, Lord, we can't see, but you see. You know the people that are fighting, the people that are, the devil is really harassing. Those that are about ready to give up, you know them, God. We don't, we don't know them, but you do. And I'm asking God to give us a word from heaven. Lord, that is strengthened, that encourage, that motivate them, Lord, to just keep on going. What they have to go through, Lord, let them go through it in faith. Yes. Go through it in confidence, Lord. Yes. Go through it in trusting in you. Yes. And Father, we'll thank you for it. In Jesus' name. Jesus. Praise God. Second Timothy chapter 2, verses 1. Now, therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the thing that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faith of men, who shall be able to teach other also. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No man that ward entangle himself with the fathom of his life, that he may please him who has chosen him to be a soldier. And if a man also strives for the mastery, yet is he not crowned except he strives for the law. The Bible says for us not to be entangled with the fab of this life. But for us to do the thing that pleases him, be a good soldier. Do the thing that pleases him, that we may please him. Amen. You know, I, I, I try not to get involved. Jesus called us for the ministry, sister. And I've been to write that script down where he says, and ask. Peace the man, we ain't gonna serve the table. We're gonna find you seven deacons out there to do that, but we're gonna continue to give ourselves to prayer and minister of the word. And the Bible says for us to, uh, for us to uh, not to get entangled with the fast of this life. You know, I, God got people maybe they wanna march and carry around signs and picket signs and, and stuff like that, let them do it. But God and God called me to go tell them Jesus real, and he called me to carry around no sign. I appreciate those that are carrying around signs. 
And some of us say, run, run, well, look, look what we've done. Uh-uh, it's prayer. Prayer that's what, yeah. prayer is helping you out there. Yeah. You know, God has gave you that to mod and pick it and get time. You do that. But God has called me to minister in this world. And I'm not getting entangled with the fact of this. I'm not going to get entangled with that stuff. I'm not condemning it, not judging it, but I'm not going to get entangled with that stuff. God didn't call me to do that. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to minister this word. Yeah. The Bible says, but to be strong in the grace of Jesus Christ. Be not entangled with the fact of this life. I mean, please. We can't, we can't get involved with everything out there and then please Jesus. You can't do it. You want to say, you, no, I'm not speaking against that. I appreciate what Martin Luther King did. I believe God had anointed him for that. To do that, the effect that he had, yeah. you know, but it ain't for me. Right. It's for me to pray. God help him. God strengthen him. Yeah. God let thing work out for prayer. Yes. You know the the, the the king of the queen of England said she read had, had a prayer from John Knox and all the army of England because you know prayer works. Work. Yeah. And God telling us here, don't get don't be entangled with the fact of this life. All this us the fact that we the men. I'm talking the men of God, the minister of God, the women of God. Getting involved right now, you're going to minister, they're involved in all this stuff. Mm -hmm. Pastors and preachers, they're involved in everything out there. And we need, we should be giving ourselves to the ministry of the word. Right. And the prayer and fact and seeking God and crying out to God. God put this, put some spiritual prayer behind this stuff. Mm -hmm. You help them out there, you strengthen them. Yeah. But we're involved in a lot of this stuff, you know. If God called you for that, fine, but it didn't call me for that. And, Sometimes I'd be ashamed to say it. And I'm not ashamed to say it. That's right. never, never been to the NAACP meeting. Never been to that, that thing downtown there. The civil rights thing. I've never been there. I don't have anything against it. Not never. Just ain't been there. It's just that for me. God called you. What did he call you for, Ron? You try to fulfill what God called you. He ain't called everybody for the same thing. And I'm not going to condemn nobody. I don't want nobody to condemn me, but I, I believe prayer works. The Bible says, our weapon of warfare, what? I'm not crying, but mighty through God to the pulling down the stronghold. And prayer will bring down the stronghold. Yes, yes. The prayer of the saints of God will pull down the stronghold. Yes, yes. So, you know why we can do all this other stuff? Without prayer, somebody's praying. Amen. Somebody's praying. God had not did what he done for the people. Just because what they've done, somebody been praying. Yeah, that's right. Somebody been reaching out to God. God, yeah, you see the si so, so, circumstance, you see the situation, you see the condition. God help us. Have mercy upon us. Yeah. In the Bible, man, we need to seek to please Him. The call of the chosen must be a, yeah, to be a soldier. Don't be entangled with the fact of this life. Mm -hmm. you know, you know, we ought not be entangled with all this stuff for the plan, man. Just if God have called you, if He called you for that, fine. If you feel led to do that, then fine. But if God call you to the ministry, call you to minister, preaching the word of God, then that's what you need to clean yourself to preaching the word of God, ministering the word of God. I know a lot of people don't look at it like that. And if anybody be listening to this, they probably trying to uh, condemn me for saying this. But let me tell you something. God wants you to do what he has chosen you to do. I don't care how good something else that people don't know, I don't care how good it is. If God didn't choose you for that, then don't you be getting bothered. You try to stick to Jesus. And stick to what he said. Amen. Remember the plan? As God help us to. I'm trying to please God because down there we're going to stand before the judgment of God one day. That's right. Yes, Lord. We're going to stand before him. And Jesus told us we need to be found trying to cycle. Do what he tells us. Don't make me know how little it is. Don't make me know how big it is. You know? Amen. Amen. God, God told Eden, don't you touch that tree. Mm -hmm. You know. Don't you touch that tree. Don't you say, don't touch it. Don't eat of it. Don't even touch it. Mm -hmm. But they did it anyway, didn't they? At least Eve did. Mm -hmm. I told you, it ain't the, it ain't, uh, Ron, Ron, it ain't the fruit that's up on the tree. It's the power on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? It ain't they called it an apple, but it wasn't that, wasn't that fruit. It's that pear that's on the ground that, that messed up everything with Adam and Eve. You know? So we need to try to obey God. If we obey God, I said I might minister on in uh, Deuteronomy 28 today, but I didn't. The Bible said, you would hearken diligently. Mm -hmm. yeah. If we would hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord our God and to keep his command, to keep saying, He said, Blessed shall you be where? In the cities and in the fear of God, telling us right here, 
Listen, if you do what I say, do you're going to be blessed. You ain't got to worry about that. You're going to be blessed. Amen. Your bass is going to be blessed. Your store is going to be blessed. The fruit of your land is going to be blessed. If you're hawking diligent, we ain't got to, if we hawking, you ain't got to worry about it. But God said, I'm going to bless you. If we listen to him, he's going to bless you. Amen. We yes. got that promise. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Your God don't lie. If we hawk and diligent, sometimes people ain't going, they're going through a lot of stuff because they ain't hawking to God. Right. And I know we all have sin and came short mm -hmm. of the glory of God. You know? Although, Sister Jones, sometimes we're striving, sometimes we're praying, we still come up short. Yes. I've got plenty of people out there now that probably striving, trying to do their best. You know what? They still come up short. Everybody comes up short. I don't care who you are, it comes up short. Yes. But I believe God help us, he says, that they're trying to strive. Yes. Yes. Man, go, when I stand before him, I won't say, well done, my good and faithful servant. Yes. You know? yes. I won't be faithful in that that I do. You see the few people here, we can't get them now like we used to, but I won't be faithful in that that God have called me to do. Yes. But when I stand before him, I'm going to give him count. I'm not going to give him count to nobody else, what nobody else do. Right. What God tells other people, I'm going to give him count what God tells me to do. Yeah, that's right. But the Bible says, but the, but not to be uh, not, uh, but be entangled with the fathers of this life. They may please him that chosen them to be so. Yeah. This is what I'm trying to do. Be faithful to him that, you know, not able to be little or to be big. It don't make nothing matter. Obedience. Now, I probably read it somewhere. Obedience, the Bible says, that tell us Saul. Samuel telling us, Saul, the obedience better than the sacrifice. To obey. And this was all about God tells us to go out there and preach. To preach my word. You know, exhort my name. You know, preach the gospel of the kingdom. And this is what we need to do. I don't care what else goes on out there in the world. God got people out there ordained for that. But whatever God tell you to do, that's what you do. I don't care how good things look that other people are doing, you stick to what God has you to do. I don't know nothing now, brother. I don't want to do nothing now. But they exhort Jesus to lift him up. Yeah. Tell the people, thank God he's the way, the truth, and he's the life. Yeah. And if you call up on him, Sister Jonah, yeah. believe him, trust him. Yes. He'll make a way for you. Yes. I'm a living with him. Jesus will make a way for you. Yeah. Amen. Thank God the Bible says, what he'll make, if your ways please the Lord, what? He'll make your enemies be at peace with you. Think, are you hearing this? Yes. If our ways please God, God got a way of making our enemies be at peace with us. Thank God we ain't got to get out there and fight. Thank God we're also current weapons. He said if you, your ways please him, he'll make your enemy. That's all you want your enemy to be at peace with you, Brother Frank. Thank God to love you. Let him be at peace with you. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. I, mean, I never love you, sister. But as long as he give you peace. Amen. Yeah. If our ways please the Lord, mm -hmm. He make even our enemy be at peace. Mm -hmm. You know, I see that happen personally. Mm -hmm. He's God. Listen, Romans twelve, verse one to three. Oh, I appreciate the Lord. Yes, yes, amen. We're just gonna go to. Are we gonna go to do the run of it? Romans 12, verses 1 through 3. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your body a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God with your reasonable servant. Yes. And what? Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will. The Bible says, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed. We can't think the way the world thinks. Amen. You can't act the way the world acts. Amen. You can't believe like the world believes. The Bible says, don't be conformed to this world. Don't walk in the footsteps yes. of this world. Amen. But be transformed by the renewing. Our, you know, God renewed my mind. God renewed our mind. Thank God. We used to, down there, used to want to go out and party and drink and, mm -hmm. and do everything else I did. And then honor God. But God had renewed our mind. Now, right now, we are not conformed to the ways of the world. We do things differently. We believe differently. Yes. The Bible tells us we are a chosen generation. Royal preachers. Yes. The Bible says, young man, for us not to be conformed to the world, but be transformed. We can't think like the world. If the world don't like you, that's okay. Yes. If the world speak against you, that's okay. Yes. But the scripture tells us here, don't be conformed to the ways of the world. Don't be conformed to the way the world think and the way they talk and the way they right. act. 
Don't be conforming. Sometimes we think we have to act like that where we can be accepted. All we need is Jesus to accept us. That's all you need. God, he said, if I'm for you, Sister Joe, he's for you, who can be against you? I don't care if the whole world will be against you. If you be different. But if Jesus is on your side, you know, it's like you're more than the world against you. We got to believe that thing. I don't care if nobody don't like this. Thank God that Jesus is for you. Run, run. If nobody like you on your job, if you work a job, nobody like you on your job, if Jesus is for you, he's more than your job against you, more than anybody. He said, let's not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of our minds. Yes, Lord. And we may prove, yes, you know. Jesus. We got to strive to be a good soldier of Jesus. I've been trials. God helped me to be a, a, a good soldier. I've been striving and asking God to help me. I know I make mistakes. I stumble. But that ain't my desire to stumble. My desire is to please Him. Yes, Lord. That may please Him. They have called me and chosen me. Yes. Mm -hmm. The Bible says, be not conformed to this word. Mm -hmm. We don't think like the you Run, run. If we do, throw every kid around. We don't go out there to run. Speak to brother. What's up, daddy? Mm -hmm. Hey, papa. Hey, look. The new creature in Christ. Amen. You know? We don't do that stuff. We don't use, look, we're a new creature. God help. Man, our mind has to be renewed. We know how to speak to people. We know how to be humans. We know how to be. But you know about all this dabbing and swaying around and new creature chosen. Yeah. God have chosen them for this. You know. Yeah. And Brother Clay, it ain't something that we do. God has chosen them. Yeah. And God break that spirit off of us. He renew our mind. Yes. No, we're trying to please him, you know? Yeah, yeah. It may be cool for you to go out there and you know, get all this dabbing and all this stuff. Let me tell you something. You ain't doing it because you're trying to please him that call you, him that chose you. You're trying to live that life. You're trying to walk like he walked. The Bible says, be conformed. So this world will be transformed, both by renewing your mind. Yes. Those of you that are listening at home, listen to him, listen to this word. If you're not accepted, that's okay. You know? If you're not accepted, that's okay. You know? They don't receive you, that's okay. You know? If they have been against you, that's okay. Because if Jesus is for you, it don't make no difference. They can't stop you. you know? They can't stop you. They may throw stun block away, but they can't stop you. Thank God. But we are trying to please Jesus. You know? And we'll be comfortable. We'll be satisfied. We have our mind. Uh, made up that we, Lord, I'm going to please you, regardless. Mm -hmm. You help me. Mm -hmm. You got to help us. Listen. Matthew 6, verse 24. Matthew 6, verse 24. We are, we are, we are trying to do the thing that pleases Jesus, you know. Yeah. It ain't a popularity thing. Some people do things to be popular. Win popularity, stuff like that. Folks, that, ain't, that don't mean that they ain't gonna help you now. Uh -uh, not at all. We do things, say things, act in a way that make us popular. Mm -hmm. You know? Make that accept. I see a lot of these ministers. They got they have all this stuff around their neck and have them, them big old rings on their fans. Mm -hmm. Great big, you know. I, I, I don't be conform like the world. the world do that stuff. Yes. You know? And trying to be accepted on that. Look, look that the world don't accept you. That's the only accept you. Thank God you do the thing that please God. The Bible says not to do nothing that's offensive to the gospel. Yeah. And we tell us, run right to the deny yourself. There's some self denying in following Jesus. There's some, yeah, yeah. some self denying. You got to deny your own old fleshly mind, your own old yeah. fleshly desire. They come up, yeah. they present themselves, but you know what? You got to be willing to deny yourself. Say, God, this ain't your weight. I don't believe it's your weight. And you help me. Yes. You help me. And if people don't receive you, they, don't, they reject this, all right. It's all right. Yeah. I don't. Because you get in prayer and you talk to God, He'll comfort you. Yes, He will. One thing about Jesus, He'll comfort you. Mm -hmm. This is Matthew, what I said, 6 and, 6 and 24. Listen. No man can do what? Serve to serve master. master. The Bible, we, we can't please man. You can't. 
No man can serve two masters. So we got to do the things to the sight that pleases God. Amen. Do the thing that that calls it, that pleases him, that pleases him, that he had called us to do. Because can't nobody serve. We're not going to serve God in the world. You're not going to please the world. You're not going to make the world happy and going to make God happy too. You just can't do it. It ain't possible. It ain't possible. That's right. That's it's right. not possible. It ain't possible, sir, John. It ain't possible. Mm -hmm. The Bible says, can't no man serve two masters. You, you ain't going to do it. Right. We're not going to serve God and the devil too. You, it ain't going to happen. Mm -hmm. so true. And brother, I'm trying my best to serve both of them. It ain't working, I'm telling you. <laughs> and if you're trying your best to serve both of them, I tell you, that's the one you're serving. You know who that is. <laughs> that's the devil. Because yes, when you try to serve the world and the God too, you're serving the devil. Because yeah. the Lord wants all of us out there. You want every bit of us. Now, the, the devil, he'll take part of you and let God have part of you. But, listen, but God said, uh, I, I want all of you. Yeah. But you can't serve, listen, you can't serve two masters. That's right. You know, if we're going to serve God, we're going to serve the world. But if you can't serve, we can't go out there and, and serve the world, you know, be a participant, you know. You know, they don't find me. You know, I got to catch. If I had, if I worked in the club job, I had to catch my check. I'm not going to no liquor store to catch it. You know, I'm not going down at the casino, man, to eat dinner. Man, they got all these restaurants. And I had got good food. Man, they, some try to get me down there, Robert. Man, they got good food down there. I, 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 man, they got good food. Up there. I said, nothing wrong Piccadilly. Amen. Houston, I got good food out there. Amen. I ain't going out there down there because people, you know, know what? People see you down there, and they, they don't know where you're down there either. Way you're down there trying to play them slot machines. So we do the thing that pleases, try to please God. You know, you can't serve two masters. Listen, either you will hate the one. And love up. Listen. Uh -huh. uh, as you will hold to the one and despise the other, you cannot serve God and man. A God and man. You can't serve God. We can't serve both of them. Either I'm going to serve God, run, run, or I'm going to serve man. I'm going to serve man. I'm going to serve. I'm going to serve one. We ain't going to serve both of them. You just can't do it. I know our churches do that now. They try and do it, but you just can't do it. You can't do it. And what we do, we strive. And one thing about Jesus helped us. Yes. So, so we strive. We're not perfect, but we strive. And Jesus is striving. He will help us. Yes. Thank God. We don't claim to be perfect. We don't claim that we don't make mistakes. But Jesus, we see our hearts and see us striving. See, we're trying. This is what we want to do. Folks, I want to please God. I come up short, Sister Joan, but I want to. It's in my heart to please God. It's in my heart to obey Jesus. Yes. 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 And therefore, He helps us. Yes, Glory. Yes, He helps us. You know. Man, we love him any kind of way. Yes, yes. We want to do right. Yes. Then Jesus gets in and helps you out there. Yes, yes, yes. You got to do the thing that pleases him, that yes. chose us to be a soldier. Yes, yes. And you're, I've been in the military. And you get in the military, it's just like you can't run, run what they call the world. You can't go back out of the military and start doing all this stuff, man, and go back in the military. No, you're obligated to talk the same. You obligate what time you get up and what time you lay down. You obligate you know, every minute is ob obligated to Uncle Sam. You're going to serve Uncle Sam and they're they going to dis give you all this honorable discharge. Come on. You're going to please Uncle Sam. You know? We didn't have our own way. We can do what we want to do. You know, they give, you, give you a haircut, give you the clothes to dress, give you the kind of food to eat. You ain't going and going and say, I want a hamburger, I want a cheeseburger, man. Give me a fill in me, uh uh, you ate the potatoes and the meat and bread and, and the more powdered eggs and stuff like that. You ate what they gave you to eat. Because you were totally subject to the military. You totally subject. Yes. And this is what we're trying to God help us to be totally subject to you. Help us to do the thing that pleases you. Not our own self, not our own will, our own mind. And folks, I'm telling you, that ain't helping you. That ain't, you ain't accomplishing nothing if you do that. Amen. You may feel like the devil may tell us that you are, but you ain't if you're not. You strive to please God, and God will help you. Yes, you will. I'm here today because I'm trying to please God. Oh, I could be at home. 
you know, laying around, got up this morning, I didn't feel really good, my body didn't feel good, and I said, God help me. But you know what? I'm trying to please him. I'm willing to press. I'm willing to strive. I'm willing to go through. I'm willing to go. Man, when my body be in pain, my body be in pain a lot, I'm willing to go. I, I, I ain't, I ain't want to stop. I said, God, don't let me stop. You let me pray. Because I want to please him, man. When I stand before him, I want to say, well done, my good and faithful servant. Some people let little pain stop them. And I said, little pain, but it can be some great pain, but they let it stop them. Let anything stop them. Any little hymn coming where really they stop. They don't stop. Be instant in season. Out of season. Make up your mind you're going to pray. Make up your mind you're going to strive. Make up your mind you're going to please God. Say, God, it's in my heart to please you. It's in my heart. To, it's in my mind. It's in my spirit, God, to, to please you. If you will help me, I'm going to do my best to please you. That's it for me. It's to please God. You know? Man, I'm denying myself from a lot of things. Done there a, bit, a lot of temptation that came my way. Since I got saved, you know how to do that. Man, I could have did that stuff and kept it undercover. You know, Jesus saw it, but it <laughs> kept undercover. Other people, you know, I strive yes, yes, yes. To, to obey Jesus. You know? yes, yes, yes. We make a mistake sometimes. Yes, Jesus. I'm telling my son, last night, he called last night and talked to me. Talked to me a long time, matter of fact. We used to talk about walking away and and then sometimes the devil may get hooked, you know. He's dead. I think about you. You say you cursed that man out about your money. And I say, have been fasting right around, man, three days. Not no water, anything. Went construction. And got to the bank, man, no money in the bank, man. They check ain't no good. So I thought he needed a good customer. So I gave him one. But I had to repent. I said, God, forgive me. And I found out that you don't have to do that. Amen. And he was talking to dad sometimes we yeah, yeah, no people sometimes people use the stuff. Yes. But if you realize that man that was stubborn the right way and repent, God will help you. Yes, you know. yes, he would. And I did, brother. I've been fasting, man, three days. Man, in the summertime, working construction, man. And then get to the bank, ain't no money, man. You know. I said, and I said, this guy needs save or no save, this guy needs a good cousin. <laughs> God forgave me for that, you know. Amen. But God, we, we, he strengthened us. He helped us. Yes. Now, I don't mind telling that. That's you know, right. Ain't the life I live. That's not my lifestyle. That's not. He that cursed me and said things to me since I've been saved, you know, I have held my peace. They have spoke. Yes, yes. Trying to please God. I have not fought back. Mm -hmm. People have said awful things about me. I have not fought back. I'm trying to please God. God said, hold your peace. The yes. vengeance belongs to me and I will yes. pay, said God. Yes, yes, yes. Sometimes your flesh want to speak up. You know? Yes. And I tell you one time right up here on a union and uh, I believe right there by the exit on, I forget the name of the street, maybe get the name of it, by McDonald's over there. Pull up behind that guy, he he liked the car. I didn't see him in the car. And uh, he was trying to push the car back in the service thing around gas and I come too close. I didn't see him. He stood around the car, man, stuck his finger up at me like this. You know. The white guy. And no, 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 I do anything. I had opened that door and stepped out of the car, had that one foot out, and the guy said, What you doing? I said, What are you doing? And I sat there and thought, I said, God, what am I doing? I got back in that car. <laughs> you know, God, what the heck you got there? But he made me mad, stuck his finger back. And but God, Jesus, it, it's what you're doing. Mm. And I thought to myself, Lord, what am I doing? Mm -hmm. I got back in that car. Shut that door and bag on up. You know, let it get in there. Yeah. That flesh wanted to get up and act up, but thank God the Holy Ghost spoke to me. Thank God it, he stopped me. Yes. Because you know we're trying to please God. Sometimes that flesh, if it catches you off God, it'll call you act up once you realize it. Thank God for the Holy Ghost yes. that will speak to you. Thank you, Jesus. The Bible says it's a guide, it's a lead yes. and a guide, yes. and, and it'll help you to please God. And this is what we're trying to do. Do everything we can to please God. Every little bit of thing. Not just the big thing, the little thing. That's right. You know. Amen. The Bible said we to do all we can to seek to please him that are called. He said, You can't serve two men. You can't serve two gods. You can't serve two masters. You know, you're gonna serve one and can serve uh, serve the other. You're gonna love one and hate the other. You're gonna yield to one and despise the other. You, you, you mean serve them too. Ain't no such thing as quite offense. 
So don't you can't you can't be scrawled up. There's no such thing as scrawled up. If you scrawled up, then you're on the devil's side. Because Jesus didn't have a scrawled up. Well, you know they scrawled up. No, they ain't. And nobody scrawled up. They may not be. They may be a look at down there. If you're doing things. And, and maybe pretend you're doing it, trying to do things. If you ain't doing things for God on God's side, then I don't care if you, well, I, I go to church and I do not do that. And, until you're out there doing things, where I stuff, but you're not scrapping on faith. You, 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 you're on that other side. Now, if you're out there trying to strive to God, help me. Say, I got things I got. To, I said, yeah, that's God. It's me again, Lord, with a problem. Yes. I need an answer to it. Yes. Now, we are, look, sometimes we may be Spell of fear, but Jesus helped us to get on the right That's side, right. and sometimes right. it take a little longer. That's right. Then other people, sometimes, but yeah. God will get you out of that place right yet. He'll get you over on His That's side. Right. That's right. Yes. Now I don't, I don't deny. I know people. Some people out there maybe trying to think they haven't got completely submitted yet, and God will help them. He won't condemn them. He'll help them. That's right. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Jesus. But when we if we go to church and church and confess that we are this and confess that we are saved and confess this and that, thank God that we still doing things. Then you not scrap no friends. You on the other side. You're on the other side. You're not scrapping no fence. No. If you're doing things, thank God, if you're doing things of the, of the world and going to church too, when you ain't scrapping no fence, folks, you're on the other side. Amen. You know? And I'm trying not to be on the other side. I so said, have you ever, just run out, run, run out, scrap the fence probably a few times since I've been saved. Amen. Amen. I know God didn't have to do that. I just be, I'll be, you know, be honest, right. you know, because God knows everything anyway, you know. But one thing about us, He knows our heart. Yes, he, he knows our desire. He knows we want, yes, yes. you know. Thank you. So ain't no such thing as spell offense. If you confess to be saved and out there doing things, you know? this brother told everybody why she come in three or four o'clock in the morning. He said one night he, she come in, he heard come, heard her driving up. Looked out the window and she out there wiping her neck off. Three o'clock in the morning and had a panic, throw the panic across her shoulder. <laughs> said, Look at she. And he got on about that and she said, I talk in Tom. Look at it. I don't care if you do talk in Tom. Sister so, George, you do that kind of stuff, you ain't saved. There ain't no scrap offense. You know? You don't do that kind of stuff. Something helps you, something guides you. Something was man, if, if we get that place to society, thank God that God helped us, then we can't confess that man we are in Christ. We can't confess that we are living that kind of life and doing them kind of things. We can't confess that we are here in Christ, but we are not. That's right. Amen. We are not. You know. Amen. Jesus will help you get out of it. Yes, he will. Amen. He helped you get the Bible, man. We got to do the thing that please him that call call us to be soldiers. Don't get entangled with the fathers of your life. Amen. With this world. Get out there and get involved in all this stuff, you know. Yes, Lord. They can do all the more they want. I ain't finna march. Yeah, I can pray for them. Amen. Yeah. I can be at home praying while they marching. Mm -hmm. Asking God to give them safety to yeah. work things out for them. Yeah. I think us as Christians, I think our weapon warfare are prayer. It's prayer. Yeah. It's not physically doing stuff. You know? It's not crying. The Bible ain't crying. Yeah. But it's mighty through God to put them down the stronghold. And we'll get accustomed to praying, get accustomed to asking God, believing God, living to Him for the answer. Yes. God can work things out, Sister George, and not even make no enemy. Amen. Amen. He can work stuff out for a run, run, and don't even make no enemy. Sometimes we'll try to work stuff out and we make enemy in the process. Sometimes make people don't like it. We're trying to work stuff out, but God can work stuff out and not even make no enemy. God can touch people's heart. Change your mind. Yes, amen. Our weapon of warfare. And you know, we pray for this brother that worked with me. He had lost one son. He's trying to get his wife to go back in church. I told you before. He's trying to get his wife to get back in church. White brother. She wouldn't get back. He said, You need to stop that drinking. We need to go back to church. Said, no. She said, I don't care. He said, God can take one out of something. She said, I don't care if God take the other. I said, I ain't getting, I ain't stop drinking. I ain't gonna, she said, I don't care. And he come to, come to work one morning crying. He was an older fella. He was crying. Run, run. Tell back what his wife said. I said, listen, man. My name is Jess. I said, listen, Jess. I said, this woman don't own herself. I said, God, God own her. 
I said, Jesus, you can stop him. You know. And he's not, no, nah, ain't nothing going to help us. Man, Jesus can stop this woman. Yes, yes. And so we got to pray. You know, just believe in God for him. You know, I don't know, maybe, I don't know how long we'll come one day. I said, I was right now. She, she, you know, my wife, she didn't quit drinking. I said, oh, yeah. She said, man, she don't drink no more. I said, Jess, what you do is get back in church now. He said, I want to get back to church, man. She didn't want to. I said, Jess, you get, you go in there. That's right. I said, you go. I said, she may follow you. I said, you go. I said, don't be waiting on her. You go. Yeah, I want to go, man. I can't get her to I suggest you go. I said, God, then stop us. Like, you, you. So he kept waiting around on her. And so God showed me her, showed me the house, showed me the refrigerator, showed me a tall six pack of Budweiser and one can was missing out of there. Five cans. And, and I see it. And God showed me what it was. I went away one day. I said, man, how's your wife done? Man, she just thought about it. I said, Jess, I told y'all to get in church, man. I said, told you go. God will help you. That's right. He can help your wife and help your husband. Mm -hmm. He just thought about it. I said, yeah, I saw it. I said, what you drinking? But why I was talking. He said, that's exactly what you drinking. I said, God showed me. But now y'all got back in church like I told you. God could have kept her. Yes. But she get into the house of God. She hearing hear the word of God. That's something with a strength and I gave her yes. strength. Yes. Mm -hmm. God, is, God can, listen, man don't rule this, if God rules man. As we said, I said all the time, he don't kick the door down, he got to be invited in, but if he want to kick the door down, he's God, he can kick it down if he want to. He can kick that door down, tell you, Sister Joe. Amen. Now I tell you, thank God, he can, when he get through, if you don't kick the door, when he get through kicking things, you'll be, you be ready for him to come in. <laughs> God can do work and run and run, run. Man, you be ready. You be open that door. Come on in, Jesus. Come on in and help me. God can put you through so much stuff. Yes. <laughs> you be working, uh, working in Jerry Cloud. I was coon hunting one day, man. We're up in the tree. And that coon was, man. They, they, him and that coon had it up there. You know. He said, shoot up in here. And he said, no, we may, have, we may hit you. He said, look. I don't care. One of us got to have some relief. <laughs> Just, you know, me and this cool one, somebody got to have some relief. So. But God can put us enough stuff. Thank God. Before you, thank God, you you invited me. Yes, that's right. Yes, Lord. Because you got to help me. How much stuff on me? Help me. I need you. All this stuff coming up on us. Yes, yes. Yes. And I told my sister, y'all should like I told you, man. Because God, he, he give you a chance. Yes, yes. Don't be waiting on your wife. You go. He make him draw her. Yes. You know? But the Bible says we are not to, not to be entangled with the fat of this whole life. You know? right. I'm not trying to get entangled with none of this stuff out here. Amen. I might not be as strong as I'd like to be, but I'm not trying to get entangled with all this stuff out here in the world. Amen. Stuff going on. I ain't just ain't involved in it, you know? This is Galatians 1, verses 10 through 17. Be not entangled with the fathers of this life. Let God have mercy upon me. Yes. That's the life God called us. Didn't it? It ain't even more than anybody. He ain't trying to be so, like I said, trying to outholding somebody else. I'm not trying to outhold nobody else. I'm just trying to live for Jesus. Amen. You live as holy as you want to hold you want to, and I'm gonna try to live that, but I'm not trying to outhold nobody. <laughs> you know? I ain't. Nothing get in there. Well, I live a whole than you. No, I ain't, ain't, ain't got nothing to do with it. The Bible says, in Romans 9, I believe, say, it ain't him that will it or him that run it. What? God that what? Show his mercy. Yes. It ain't him that run it or him that win it. It's God that show his mercy. I don't care how much we run, how willing we are, it's the mercy of God that helps us. Yes, yes. It's the mercy of God that keeps us, that sustains us. Yes, Lord. And if God don't have mercy upon us, I don't care what you do. It's got to be the mercy of God. Yes, yes, Amen. Yes, yes. Sister Angel, I'm telling them, I said, listen here, uh, the Bible says what you're bound on earth shall be bound in heaven, what you're loose on earth. I said, but it's got to be bound or loose in heaven. Amen. We can bind it on earth, we can lose it on earth, but if heaven will never amen, ain't nothing going to happen. Nothing. We may think we got that authority, got that power, but it, man, it's got to come from the source of that. Amen. Jesus got to okay it. Jesus got to amen. Amen. Yes. 
If you don't deal with man and brother, thank God, it ain't going to happen. That's right. I don't care what kind of power, authority, we think we got. The Bible says, I'll bind in heaven, I'll loose in heaven. It's got to be done in heaven before it works. Yes. Before it takes effect, it's got to be. Somebody says, well, God told me. I know he told it. <coughs> I spoke the other week in, and Peter healed that man at the, at the gate, the lame man. Mm -hmm. And the people begin to come to Peter and look at him, Peter, listen here. It's not by our own power. Not by our own authority, this man standing. It's the faith in this man's name. This man and faith in his name. Look at what? Sister Joy, even Peter could have stood and said, Yeah, I got this power. God told me to say, so yeah, listen, what I give you keys, what you're buying on earth, shall be bound in heaven. He could have stood there and accepted all that the power of He did it. He said, Listen here. He says, By the name of Jesus. <coughs> Because if Jesus didn't okay that thing, although Jesus gave Peter that, if down there, Jesus got to okay that thing. Yes. And Peter said, listen, at the name of Jesus Christ, this man standing for you. Not my power, not my might. Don't look on it. Although Jesus have told me, what you're buying on earth shall be bound in heaven. I give you the key, Peter. And Peter still trying to acknowledge Jesus. He gave all Amen. authority mm. to Jesus. You know? Ain't like some of us, baby. We, man, we pat ourselves on the back. Mm -hmm. well, come over here, let me pray for you. You're praying, don't do it to nobody else that Jesus don't do it about. <laughs> Sometimes you think I'm praying. Amen. And if God hear my prayer, it's just his mercy. And I pray all the yes. time. God, yes. let me find mercy with you that you answer prayer. God, I've answered so many prayers from me, but you know what it is down there? It's the mercy of God. It's the grace of God. They find favor with me. Thank God. It ain't Brother Austin, it ain't nobody else. It, it's the grace of God that you find in your prayer. Because if he don't find grace and mercy in your prayer, ain't nothing going to happen. Ain't nothing going to get done. Amen. Not a thing. Amen, Jesus. Yeah. Oh, that's the truth. Nothing. The Bible said us to please him that chose us to be a soldier. Mm -hmm. yeah. We can't look on ourselves down there. I don't care what God do. You can't never look up on yourself. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I don't care what God does for you. You can ask God something down there and he'll do it. You can pray for somebody to do something. God does. Look, you always give him praise. Give Jesus praise. Don't never. Amen. Say, well, look for that now. Mm -mm. It don't work like that. Amen. When you begin to take God's glory, he begin to cut you off. Oh, that's right. You're going to pray for him. He'll let you say it. Mm -hmm. You know? More honor. Mm -hmm. Listen. Jesus. Galatians 1, which is 10 through 17. I like giving Jesus glory myself. Amen. Because I want to keep doing stuff. Because like that young man now, we praying, Sister, Sister Joy. This young man right now, they want the doctor to take his eye. And they called me and told me about it. We go pray. So we pray. We've been praying every day about that young man. God, you can spare that young man now. Yeah. Like you can say that. He don't have to take that eye. Thank you. Jesus. If Jesus said, no, he's not going to be removed, then it ain't going to be removed. Amen. But Jesus got to give the authority from heaven. Yeah. Yeah. He got to give the okay from heaven. And I told myself, I believe Jesus. I said, I know Jesus can say that boy's eye. I, I, I believe it. Amen. Now let's see if we can touch him. Let's see if we can. If we can touch him, get find favor with him. Yes. There ain't nothing he can't do. Amen. But we got to give him praise and give him honor. Amen. Lift him up. Yes. And down there, what I try to do, whatever God do for you, down there in ministry, look, always give him praise. Don't never, don't never. Don't never take God's credit. Don't never take God's praise. Don't ever do that. You always bow before him and give him thanks. Amen. Always. Then we keep blessing and keep it. This is Galatians 1, verses 10 through 17, I believe. Yes, 10 through 17. Listen. So we do the thing to try to please God. Being a good soldier. You know, don't get entangled with the families or life. I know a lot of Christians not in, involved in everything out there, but you don't need to get involved in all that stuff. You need to do the thing that pleases Jesus, you know? Amen. You know, well, yeah, you know, if God called me to do that, fine. God don't call you. Don't you get it because you, you think you're really doing something, really? Yeah. 
I believe prayer works better than anything. Amen. Yeah. I really do. I believe prayer works. It's something about prayer, so say. It's something about prayer. I guess that's why we have so much trouble trying to pray. Amen. You know? You need to pray. Never may have a thousand things you bring before your eyes for you to do. Amen. You need to do this. You need to do that. Amen. And you got to get to pray in about 10, 15 minutes. They're going to pop stuff up. But you know you need to take care. You need to get this done. You need to get that done. <laughs> you don't want to pray. You don't want to get in the place where we come back to Jesus. You know? Amen. That's it. And sometimes you just got to fight your way through. Oh, yes. yes. And if I get up late, Ron, if I get up late in the morning, if I get up late, that devil's going to fight me with prayer. Mm. Sometimes I go in now, I might get up about 7 o'clock, 7.30, something like that, that devil's going to fight me with prayer. I go in there and maybe sit on the couch and say, Lord, I got to pray. And I just be tossing, God, I got to pray. I don't need to pray. <laughs> Finally, I just break down and go and get on my knees and be glad I did. Yeah. And I, if God let me get up about 5, 5.30, I can get on up and I go in and pray and God will help me. Yes. But he'll fight you because he don't want you to pray. The yes. devil will fight you because he don't want you to pray. So, Joe, once you get to pray and make connection with Jesus. Yes. 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 No matter what, the Spirit of the Lord is there living. Yes. Sometimes we pray that you feel the Spirit of God come in. Thank God he's there to answer. He's there to help you. Yes. 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 Oh, he's there down there. there. Oh, and that's why the devil fights us so. You know? yes. But if you pray 10 minutes, 5 minutes, Pray them sincere. Get the minds of God. Mm -hmm. Amen. And pray that pray it sincere. Yes, Lord. Glory. Don't get us all laying down asleep. I pray the Lord my soul teeth. If I die for I wake, pray the Lord my soul teeth. Go get it. Just kind of pray sincerely. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, that's how you want to pray like that. That's what you young people want to pray like that. That's fine. Yes. We need to pray honestly. Yes. Listen, Galatians. One and ten. For do I now persuade men, or do I persuade uh, God? Or do I seek to please men? But if I yet please the men, what? I should not be what? Servant of God, of Christ. If I seek to please men, says Joy, I am not the servant of Christ. I, you just man, I don't care who we are. Amen. If we seek to please men, we're not the servant of Christ. But anytime we go out there seek to please people, thank God you can't be, look, God wants you to serve, God wants you to speak. We're supposed to be, as Paul said, ambassadors for Christ. We're supposed to be in Christ's head. Ambassadors, speaking in. So if the act of speaking is we are stand up. Thank God trying to help people, encourage people, win souls. We, we are ambassadors for Christ. Not to please men. He said, then I shall not be the servant of Christ if I seek to please men. You can't do it. I seek to help people. I don't try to please them in the, in the uh, wrong spirit. I, 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 learned, I know how to bend over backwards. Yes. I know how to have compassion. Mm -hmm. Amen. I know how to have mercy. Yes. I know how not to try to judge them. I know how not to try to condemn them. You know? But I'm not trying to please. It's got you give us wisdom to speak stuff. Sometimes that we need wisdom to speak stuff. We go in there sometimes with a hammer. But you're seeking to please Jesus because you're trying to win souls. Amen. You know. Amen. Sister, uh, Joe, if I don't win souls, man, what good am I? Mm -hmm. If I can't win souls, if I can't strengthen somebody, hold on. And I spoke yesterday in Lamentation. Jeremiah was saying that, man, he'd have made me a target for his arrow. He'd have fenced me in with huge stones. He'd have made me a prey for the lions and the bears. And, man, he did, it, it, man, he would have put me in darkness and not light. All this stuff. Then Jeremiah turned and said, I remember, I've come to mind, and thank God. Therefore, I have hope. That this God, thank God, he, his mercy is forever, his compassion fails not. He said, therefore, I got hope. Although God did all this stuff to me, he said, man, but I, I realized that this God is learning. He's compassionate, God. Yes. He's compassionate, don't fail. He's listening. Yes, thank God, therefore, I have hope. Let me tell you something. Therefore, wrong, we have hope. We may be a messed up and did that, but the God we serve is a compassionate God. He's a merciful God. He will help you. Yes. Thank God. The Jeremiah said, then I turn around and realize, man, hey, this God, I'm sorry, he, man, I'm messed up. He done did all this evil stuff to me. But I realized that this God is a compassionate God. And therefore, I have hope. We can have hope. He's compassionate, full of mercy. The Bible said his, his mercy is new every morning. Yes. Every morning, Sister Angela. 
You know, and like me, you needed it. You needed it every morning. Thank God his compassion don't fail. I tell him, although we be a mess of somebody, then we can go on our knees and God forgive me and help me from my heart. And he'll be there to help. Listen. Pause to listen in. If I please men, but I, yet I please men, and I should not be the servant of Christ. Listen. He said, but I certify you, brother, that the gospel of a priest of me is not after man. I know some people, they, they, they preach man gospel. You know, they, they, some people go out and they buy these. I know there's one guy used to sell them. Sermon. Herbert Brewster. Had a church right on tree. Everybody else friends, he used to take service in the sermons and he would sell them. So people go down to the bookstore and buy his sermons and stuff like that. Mm. Yeah, but you buying, they probably still, still doing it now, I don't know. You buying another man. God didn't give you that, you buying what God gave him. If God gave it to him, you, you buying him. Paul, that might be the servant of man. I can't be the servant of God. <clears throat> Sister Joy, Jesus knows how to speak to you. If you know how to speak to Sister Angela, you know how to speak to you. If you know how to tell Sister Angela to stay at home, you know how to tell you to stay at home. If you know how to tell Sister Angela to make it right, you know how to tell you to make it right. Then you got to go and say, Sister Angela, make it right, so I'm going to make it right here. Man, God can talk to you. Amen. Yeah. He may not tell you the same thing, but he know how to talk to you. Listen, I'm going to let you go. Remember the time I got shot in? Listen. But I suffer you, brother, that the God which will speak to me is not after man. For I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. For ye have heard of my conversation in time past in the Jews' religion, how that beyond measure I persecuted the church of God and wasted it. And profit in the Jews' religion above Men of my equal in my own nation, being more exceedingly zealous of the tradition of my fathers. But when it pleased God who separated me from my mom, mother's womb and called me by his grace to reveal his son in me, that I might preach him among the heathen, immediately I confer what? Not but what? Flesh and blood. Jesus called him. I, I, I didn't come, I didn't come straight with flesh and blood. I think I went. He's about right in the desert. And the race. He said, what I got, I didn't get it from man. The Bible, we don't need to seek to please man. God will give us something. So, George, God may give you a greater revelation, but that's all right. Let God give me, give it to me. He gave me the prophet with it. He may give other people a greater revelation and stuff like that, a greater understanding, but what did he give you? He gave you, Sister Angela, the prophet with it. Amen. We got to get stuff for other people. God's talked to us. Yes. I mean, he talks to you, he leads you, he got you. We are doing the thing to please. We are trying to be servants of Jesus. Let me read on here because my time back going. Matthew 16, 13 to 17. Matthew 16, verse 13 to 17. And I appreciate those of you that Thank you, Father. Listen, we're, we're doing the thing to please God. Yes. Not man, not man. Sometimes that spirit gives one to please man, but let me tell you something. You don't need to do nothing to please man. Please flesh. 16 verses up. 13 to 17. Listen. When Jesus came into the coast of Sisera, Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? Man, this is what man picked to say. He's who do men say that I the son of man am? This is what man began to say. You know, Jeremiah, Elijah, one of the prophets. And so Joy, this is what men are saying. This is what flesh is saying. I mean, God knows how to talk to us. God, we may hear things that people say may benefit from it, but God knows how to talk to us. God knows how to lead you. And we don't do things that please men, we do things that please God. He said, Who do men say I the son of man am? And they said, some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elijah, and other Jeremiah are one of the prophets. And he said unto them, but whom say ye that I am? Simon Peter answered and said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. 
And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon, but Jonah, for what? Flesh and blood has not revealed it unto thee, but my Father, which is in flesh. Then tell you this, man, and speak this to you, but my Father. And when he speaks up such joy, he speaks truth. He speaks stuff that's steadfast. Yeah. Ain't gonna be moved. He said, flesh and blood doesn't tell you this, but my father, which is in heaven. Yeah. Sometimes we can't listen to flesh and blood. You know, we gotta try to listen to God. Praise the God, give me a mind to hear you. I ask God all the time, Lord, give me an ear to hear you. Amen. Bless me to hear you. Because sister, sister, and we in that place all the time where we hear everything God said, we in that spiritual realm. We just ain't let me change it. I am not. In that spirit to play where I can hear everything God said. Man, I probably miss more stuff that God be trying to tell me. Amen. Amen, Jesus. Yeah. Be better off. But I pray, God, give me an ear to hear you. Give me a spirit. I can hear what you're saying. Yeah. You know? Because I know God speaks. I know God speaks, you know? I told that. I told you several times, I got, spoke to me and told me to step back on my job. And, they, and the machine threw a big old pipe out of this joint. Threw a big, a steel pipe out of that man in the air. And I didn't know what happened to it. The guy that run the machine didn't know what happened to it. I was just standing there. All of a sudden, the whole ghost folks said, step back. This joint, I made this step like this here. When I did, God turned that pipe loose. Right down from me, cut that guy's arm. Tore up his milk tube box he had that sitting there, threw that thing up. I know God speak. Yeah, oh yeah. And when the guy crossed the hall, a guy named Jane John, he came up, he said, man, so I looked over there. He said, man, I saw that pipe. It's in there, doing this here, spinning. <laughs> spinning like that. It's in the machine, in the lady machine. You got so many RPMs and running. And it's just sitting there. He said, man, I looked over there, I saw that pipe just sitting in there. Spinning. You know what no one says, John? God, he had that pipe here. Yeah, that was <laughs> Amen. Until he speak. To me, it's a step back. And as soon as I step back like that, he turned that pipe loose. Went right down that man. I said, I know he speaks. He speaks. I said, God, give me ears to hear you. Yes, Lord. He speaks. Now, he spoke. He spoke. He don't speak all the time like that. All but walk. He has spoke seven times. God, I spoke to him. Amen. And I thank God for it. That's how come I know God to speak. Yeah. And that's how come I know when God speaks to the joy. We don't know it's God because a man the, the, the resist from the father. Yeah, yes. Sometimes we say, but God spoke to me, God, and no resist never follow it. Thank God you don't know what God said. They don't know what God said. But God speaks and resist follow it, then you know what Jesus has spoke. Yes, yes. Yeah. So then he, he told me to turn around one time. I was cutting grass up there. I'm out there on my, up there, I'm the road cutting grass. I have a bag up in all them high leaves. And God said, don't bag in there. Turn around. Just like that. He said, don't bag in there. Turn around. And Christian, I thought that was me talking to myself, you know. <laughs> but boy, I obeyed myself. <laughs> I, I back up like this. God, don't back up. So turn around. Don't back up. I, I just turn around like that. When I turn around and put that weed in back out, here, that snake come out. Man, about two, maybe two or three feet from me. Come right out of there. Man, I've been bagged in there, man. He'd have hit me. Mm -hmm. Man, I got that weed either. And I worked on it, I made them bug with me. <laughs> and then I looked down my leg, I saw a little blood spot. I thought that snake had hit me anyway. Man, I run to the house. Man, I had such long people looking at my leg. I said, you checking everything out? She said, no, there ain't nobody, there ain't nobody. And I got scared. You know. But then I got all right, went back out there, went back cutting some more. But God. So Joe, he's speaking. Yes, he is. Yeah. He, he got, I know men help us a lot, man. That's all right. We, we accept that. You know, but God, he knows I speak of something. He needs to tell you. He can tell you. Yeah. He can tell you. Yeah. And he may confirm stuff. With you. Let me read. Oh, yeah, I think I finished that. Anyway, and Jesus said, Blessed are thou, son of John. Blessed are not really, but my father with us in heaven. Man, I won't read Sandy, but that's too much in the religion. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 2. 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 I may hit a little bit of that, but I appreciate you coming. 
I pray the word of God will help you to try to please God. Sometimes we come up short, make mistakes, but clearly we be trying to please God. Amen. Trying to obey him. I know I try to obey him. I know I come up short, but I, Brother Fred, I'll be trying to obey Jesus. Sometimes we may find fault in it, point the finger at the sister Angie. He said this, he did this, and he, but look, um, it, some people ain't trying to do nothing, but they still Amen. find fault in it. I am, I am trying. Amen. You got help? Yeah. You know? This is Second Corinthians 2, verses 1 through uh, 5. And I, brother, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God, for I'm determined not to know anything among you, Say Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words, what? Of who with He said, I'm not coming with man with But in demonstration of the spirit of power that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Paul said, Listen, I'm not coming with man with Paul said, When God called me, chose me, I didn't go for man. I went out there in the devil. And I got a revelation of Jesus. Let me tell you, we got to do the same folk that pleases him that calls us. Amen. That's right. You know? Be trying. Have your mind made up to God. Help me. Please help me. Yes. And he'll help you. He helping me. Mm -hmm. you know? He helped me every day. I repent every day for my sins. I don't know if I'm committed or not, but I know God being God. I'm being who I am. It's a very possibility. I done did something, man, that wasn't right with him. Amen. I done thought something that wasn't pleasing to him. But, so don't I repent every day. But I know anything I've done or not. Amen. But I repent every day because our mind ain't like God's mind. He said his thoughts are higher than the heaven is above the earth. Yes, than ours, you know. So we, we have to keep repenting. Now, let me read a little bit of this and I ain't gonna go through because a lot of it. Man, your time jumped away. Didn't none of y'all steal that time today. This is jumped away so fast. This is Samuel. First Samuel 15. I might doubt about in this thing, but, but it's up. This is what I do. And then first John, I mean first Samuel 15, verse 1 through 3. I might jump through this stuff and listen. Samuel also said unto Saul, The Lord sent me to anoint thee to be king over his people, over Israel. Now therefore hearken thou unto the voice of the words of the Lord. Thus said the Lord of hosts, I remember that which Amalek did to Israel, how he laid way for him in the way when he came up from Egypt. Now go and smite Amalek. And other than destroy all that they have, and spare them not, but slay both man, woman, infant, suckling, ox, sheep, and asses. I want you to destroy everything. Did the same the saw do it? No. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Verse uh, Verse uh, one minute. Verse 8, and he, and he took, and the Tomas saw took the king of Amalek alive, and others destroyed all the people with the edge of the sword. But Saul and the people spared Agag, Agag, and the best of the sheep, and the oxen, and of the fatland, and lambs, and all that was good, and would not uh, destroy them, but everything that was vile and bereft, refused. That they, uh, they destroyed others. God didn't tell them to do that. Amen. God didn't tell me to do that. He said, I don't want you to spare the best thing. I said, I ain't there when I told you. Mm -hmm. And I said, we need to do the thing that seeks to please God. I don't care how things sound or how things look. We need to do the thing that please God. Amen. And God told Saul, Samuel told Saul, God didn't tell you to do that. Yeah, but I spared the best. God, Saul said, listen in. Samuel said, Saul, look at God didn't tell you to do this. He said, I told you to destroy everything out there. You need to hear the word of God. You need to try to do the thing that pleases God. Yes. He said, we are spared the people. We all the people. We get all this stuff. We're going to offer up sacrifice. And God didn't tell you to save nothing to offer up sacrifice. But he went on, Sister Angel, save that stuff. And Samuel told him, let me hear from God. You know? 
He told the listener, he said, have you done everything? So I said, yeah, they said, what do you mean this is the bleeding of the sheep? What do I mean this is the bleeding of the sheep in my ears? I hear the sheep voices. I said, what does this mean if you destroyed everything? He said, well, we spared the best. You know, me and the people, we spared the best. Samuel on told Saul, listen this. He said, it's better obey than the sacrifice. In other words, will be the better than the sacrifice. I don't care if it don't look right to us to enjoy, if God tell you. Amen. Right. I don't care how it looks to you, if the Lord, you feel like God told you, then the best obey God. You know? And then if you if you think God told you, you're trying, God will help you. Amen. You know, if you won't condemn and be careful because you made a mistake, but you're trying to learn this boy. That's right. yes. You're trying to learn this boy. You're trying to hear. Yes. You know, trying to hearken to him. And God will help us, you know. Yes. A lot of us made many mistakes. We got to destroy a punk because you know we were trying to hear his voice. We were trying to learn his voice. You know. Give him a hand, Brady. We're going to cut off the hand of you. I thank God. Holy Father, thank you. Lord, today I really appreciate you for your word, God. This help us to. I know you say we got an enemy out there we ran against. Lord, we help us to strive to try to. Talking to you. Lord, I know I miss you sometimes, Father. I don't stop. Lord, I don't stop. I keep keep trying to keep trying God to hear you. Lord, I don't I refuse to give up, refuse to stop. God. Thank you. Lord, today for this word, God, help us to try to obey you, God. We may be laughed at and talked about. Sometimes, God, that's okay. But we'll do like you tell us to do. We'll be striving to do that, God. I know in the end, God, you say we're gonna, we're gonna reap a reward. You're gonna bless us. Father, strengthen your people, your ministers, your handmaids, and your servants, God. Lead them by your spirit, God. When we come short, God, have mercy upon them and help us, God. At least we out there on this old battlefield, we're trying, striving. Yes, yes. Thank you for these, Lord, to get us into this place. We're thank you for it. Praise God. God, we're gonna. Touch and agree. Those you have a need, we're gonna agree with you. Those you at home, we got several, several uh, requests that came in. That God, uh, Lord, help us to uh, meet these needs, these requests that call in, God. Lord, we can't answer this stuff ourselves. We have to pray. And see if we can touch you. See if we can find favor with you somewhere, God, that you, that you meet these needs. In the name of Jesus Christ, we agree that it be so. And we are thankful. Praise God. Give him a hand, pray. We appreciate the Lord. <laughs> and he is the prayer answering Savior. And he's the prayer answering Savior. I thank God for him. Those of you that are offering to give, we appreciate that. Thank God. God, keep us in prayer. Yes. God, keep another in prayer. Yes. You know, they're saying that, uh, I was saying earlier, they're saying that about, I believe it's December sometime, I believe they come out of uh, 300,000 people could be dead from this coronavirus. 300,000 people in this country about, I believe it's December. I was walking through the house and I kind of heard a little bit of it. I didn't really but listen to it, but I, I believe they said it's about December. I believe 300,000 people could be dead. Man, don't you know we need the blood of Jesus upon us? Amen. We need Jesus' protection. Yes, I've been trying to get people, get your eyes on Jesus. Believe in him, believe him, accept him. Somebody got to keep us. So then somebody got to protect us. So then you still working your job? Somebody got to protect you. Somebody got to keep you out there. Somebody got to preserve you. Run, run. You got to have somebody. And I tell you, look, put your eyes on Jesus. Trust him. Trust him. It's time to get that closeness with him, that relationship with him. You know, I ain't saying I got the closest relationship with Jesus and anybody else, but I'm trying to. I'm trying to. I'm trying to have this personal relationship. It's closer with him. You know, it's got to help us. Thank God. I appreciate the Lord. We're going to ask you to point the hand. We're going to ask the Lord to bless this offering. Appreciate those of you. Father, we thank you.
Father, in Jesus' name, thank you for this offering today, Lord. We appreciate you. God, we have to bless this. Know that, that you got people still giving their tithes and paying their tithes, and I thank you for it, Lord. They've been faithful. Faithful in that, Lord. And I thank you for it. Lord, that's a relationship they got between them and you. Yeah. Lord, you told them you were blessing. You rebuked the vine, God. We still, although we ain't gathered in the house of God like you, but God, you, they still need you. Yes. Lord, rebuke this divine. And God, I ask you to remember these and bless them. You said you rebuked the vine for their sake. God, honor your word. Yes, Lord. Let it be so. Let it be established, Lord, that you return it to these a hundredfold in whatever way that they need. Yes, Lord. And we thank you for it. In Jesus' name. Praise God. Give him another hand, praise. We're going to give him a little bit of praise. Praise God. Appreciate everybody, those you tuning in to keep us in prayer and, and join in again. It'll be a Tuesday night, so Tuesday night service. And let somebody know about the service. Let somebody know about the service. Huh? No, I'm still going. Okay. No, I, I ain't. I'll let it go. Let somebody know about the service in the fall. I want them to hear too. That they can call in, uh, call somebody, let them know that they can listen to the broadcast, listen to this telecast, or whatever you call it. Yes. And God may give them a word to help. God, people out there, man, that need a word from God, they may not be getting it. One place, we give something that'll help them, some, yes. some, some, yes. something that'll help people. Not all this professional stuff, something that can help folks. Yes. Something that's for reality, it's real, you know. Mm -hmm. Not all this professional preaching stuff and all this stuff, like, but just something that can get into people's heart. So we appreciate everybody in here. Invite people. I talked to my grandson the other day. The dad, some people are tuning in there. I talked to him a long time. He called me and talked to me. And, <laughs> and he said he got his head, get his head on straight down there. Right. So I began to tell me some things. The dad, I, granddad, I remember what y'all were telling us. And all this stuff began to come to pass. And I began to realize the things that y'all taught us. Yeah, all right. And, uh, and I ain't getting his head on straight. Right. Trying not to take all this other stuff out there in the streets. And, and you run around and getting this and getting that. He said, just don't take all that. I said, thank God for you. I said, you hold on. You continue that path. You know, you stay on that path and got to help you for it. Thank God. I appreciate the Lord. Until the next time, we appreciate everybody. Y'all keep us in prayer. Thank God. Amen.